What's up, everybody? Good morning. Happy Friday. Made it to the end of another week. And we are now done with day two of Seahawks training camp, going into day three today. So we heard some things. Not as much as we heard day one, because uh, day one, you're you're learning stuff, right? You're starting to get an idea for where the team currently sees things. You see who's currently in pole position for some of the uh, training battles. You see where certain players might be in their development at the start of camp. But nevertheless, we learned some interesting things yesterday, and I think we need to go over them, including one thing that could be hugely significant for the Seahawks. So, um, obviously, I think most of our minds are on the DK Metcalf contract, where that's obviously going to be bigger than anything that happened at training camp yesterday, because we've been waiting for the resolution of that one, and to get a contract that is so agreeable, where there's really nothing bad you can say about it from a team perspective, it feels it feels like a win. It feels like a big win. That's the main thing that Seahawks fans are going to have their mind on right now, but um, that doesn't mean that it's the only thing to talk about, and unfortunately, it also doesn't mean there are only positive vibes right now. It's a big positive vibe for sure. I'm happy Metcalf got paid. He deserved it. I'm happy we were able to do it without completely ruining our salary cap situation, without feeling like we overpaid compared to other similar players out there. No, there, there's none of that. We we did well. He did well. Everything's good. But um, everything is good on that front. Everything is not good on the front of another Seahawks star who... Uh, we actually went through this dance with last year. It's uh, Jamal Adams, and um, this is the other big news coming out of uh, Seahawks camp right now. He is taking some time to get his previously injured left hand checked out per Pete Carroll. So this is kind of a, almost it feels like a counterbalance to the DK Metcalf contract, where y you can't just you can't just inject yourself with nothing but sugar, right? You can't just inject yourself with uppers. You got to give yourself the downer every now and then. Maybe we wish we could just be on uppers. But no, we got a little bit of a downer here. Adams, we know that he's had surgeries on his fingers in the last two off seasons. We know that he actually had two of his fingers fused together, which is not something that players who are still in the NFL typically do. And he went to camp uh, two days ago, went out there, didn't feel right. So he didn't practice yesterday, and now he's having it looked at by experts. Uh, Carroll declined to comment on when Adams might be getting back. He also declined to comment on whether or not this would involve another surgery. But already, it's starting to look like the uh, Jamal Adams experience that we were hoping would finally come down. Now, it, it's been delayed a little bit, and at the very least, we can say that this will be yet another offseason where Adams doesn't really get the opportunity to do all the things that he needs to do to be the best version of himself. First year, COVID, nobody really could. Last year, he held out or held in, wasn't really doing all the stuff he could do to prepare himself. And now this year, this. And what I've heard is that he, he seems to believe that he's going to need another procedure done on his hand. Uh, he's getting some second opinions. We'll see what the doctors say. Sometime this week we should be getting more concrete information. But um, this is certainly not good. And Jamal Adams, look, players break down at various points sometimes. You see players, they don't start breaking down until they're like in their older 30s or even their 40s. But sometimes you see these players break down in their 20s. It does happen. So maybe Jamal's going to be one of those guys. And... Look, I, I'm not one of these anti-Jamal Adams Seahawks fans. I'm not. I know he's a phenomenal player. I know that he has a lot to offer on a football field. Um, that can be true while at the same time acknowledging the fact that the trade was bad. Both things can be true, guys. You can acknowledge that the Jamal Adams trade ended up being a disaster for the Seahawks and that Jamal Adams is still a phenomenal safety who can make your defense a lot better. But, unfortunately, that's partially contingent on utilizing him in the proper way, which last year we most certainly did not do. 
and it's also contingent on him being able to be on a football field. And since Jamal got here, he's had injury after injury after injury, and now we're dealing with this, where one day into training camp, he's got something up with his hand that has already been repaired in previous surgeries. So we'll see where this goes. It could be nothing. It could be a could be something where he just has to do some rehab for a couple weeks and then he's good to go. But at the very least, he is missing out on important training camp time, which is bad. And if this leaks into the regular season, because we're like a month and a half or so away from it, then the the people who are already getting, you know, already eager to take shots at Jamal Adams and the Seahawks fan base, well, it's going to be very easy for them to take shots because... Uh, this trade continues to not really pay any dividends. So that's the main thing to come out of camp yesterday. It's unfortunately just pure bad news. It can't possibly be a good thing. It's not like he's going to go in there and discover, oh, my, my hand is actually uh, stronger than ever now. It's like uh, Ash's hand from Army of Darkness. No, it, it, it's definitely going to be bad. So... Hopefully it's only a little bad and he misses a little bit of time, but I'm not thrilled about this development at all. Pete did not sound that hyper-optimistic about it, and with how he usually is, that's not a good sign. Also on the injury front was uh, D. Eskridge, or Dwayne Eskridge. He uh, didn't practice yesterday. He's got a little hamstring issue, which that's what he had in minicamp. Uh, I think he had a little bit of that last year. I can't remember if it was the hamstring. I know most of it was the concussion, but um, it, it's not a good sign. And, you know, there's another guy that a lot of people look at and and really they go after them as soon as something goes wrong with them because they're easy targets because the expectations and standard you held them to is so high. In the case of Dwayne Eskridge, yes, second round pick, not nearly as much as Jamal Adams, but you look at Dwayne Eskridge and you say drafting him is the reason why we didn't go get a more high-profile receiver last offseason when we were trying to put the final touches on our team, a guy like a Julio Jones. Obviously, Julio Jones, that probably wouldn't have worked out either. But even beyond that, a lot of people look at Dwayne Eskridge and they see a big hole where Creed Humphrey could have gone. And with Creed Humphrey doing what he did as a rookie... And Dwayne Eskridge now doing this after a rookie year where he didn't do all that much. You know, do the math. It's not hard. It's not hard to figure out the problem here. So that's definitely not good. If he does not start practicing soon, if this bleeds into the preseason, then it's like sharks in the water when they smell blood. Jamal Adams and Dwayne Eskridge are both very, very vulnerable to the sharks in the water. And when they have things like this where their hand doesn't feel right or they've got a hamstring issue that is apparently a couple months old, um, it, uh, it puts blood in the water, period. Other than that, um, what I heard was that both quarterbacks looked better. Locke and uh, um, Gino. Gino had a nice connection with Noah Fant. Locke is developing a nice report with Derek Young, which is interesting. Um, kind of indicates maybe a backup quarterback and a backup receiver developing a report. It seems to be going the way of Geno so far, but there's still time. Uh, the cornerbacks continue to look good. Tariq Woolen made a couple of notable plays. And there really wasn't a whole lot else to talk about from uh, training camp, to my recollection. It was um, mostly just about the guys who weren't there. So... I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys heard. What do you make of the Jamal Adams situation? What do you make of Dwayne Eskridge? Um, anything that you're encouraged about? For me, the main thing to be encouraged about right now with this team is the cornerback position based off what we're hearing. And I, I, I just hope that in a few days we get something a little more comforting about Adams and Eskridge because... Uh, Obviously, I'm a fan of the team. I want every player on this team to succeed. But uh, those two guys especially, like, they, they, um, they need to get some skins on the wall in, meaning, in, in meaningful Seahawks football to, um, I don't know, just, just kind of try to get the fan base to lay off a little bit. Because uh, it's going to be bad if we end up going through this again. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.